Dear Maya Galore, so you're about to get married and you think that somehow you are above having your relationship picked apart. Well, you're not. You put it out there, so it's going to get pried into. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. Or is there... Welcome to my channel. I am Frontenay, and today I am going to be responding to a piece of a recent vlog that the YouTuber Maya Galore posted on her YouTube channel. If you would like to watch Maya's video in its entirety, I'll leave the link listed for you. For the written version of this blog, you can visit me on my website. The link will be listed below. Now. Let's get into this audio blog. Chapter 1 Parasocial friendships does not equal an actual friendship. Usually I would say that I'm really good at ignoring negativity on my channel. I'm not going to say ignoring. I'm going to say not speaking on it or not giving it light as far as me having a conversation about it. Um, in the Q&A, I did get a question about how I deal with negativity and negative comments. And I actually had filmed me giving an answer, but then I took it out during editing because I was like, I'm not about to give this any light. Let's keep this Q&A nice and, you know, light and on subject. You know, I don't really want to go there. However, um, if I can find the footage or if I still got it, if I didn't delete it, I'll insert it here just to show you guys what I said so we can piggyback off of that. Just in case I did not keep that footage, pretty much what I said is that I delete negative comments. Um, I typically see them. Um, not only do I see them, um, my mom gets online um, and she helps me to kind of spot them because I don't really have that much time to be able to look at all of my comments anymore because I get so many. So I have other people that look to tell me if something's been said or if something is negative and they get deleted. And the reason why I delete them is because this is my platform, this is my channel, This I have complete control over the narration or what's being said about me on my channel that I own, right? <laughs> That's why YouTube gives creators the ability to delete content, delete con comments. So I utilize that and I, um, I delete them and mainly because like if there's a negative comment there and other people are thinking it or somebody doesn't you know feel strong enough to be able to say it that someone else says it then people start jumping on the bandwagon people start to believe what this person is saying people even people who maybe didn't believe it see it and then are like oh i didn't think maya would do something like that or i didn't think that this is what was happening or i didn't think he was like that or you know what i'm saying so i just eliminate that by deleting negative comments um not to say though that those comments don't bother me when i I see them. Um, I'm a human being. I feel like a lot of people forget that um, when they see me online and you know you watch me through a screen and I provide entertainment for you. A lot of people forget that I am a human. I'm a person. I'm a woman. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and break this real quick y'all before we continue talking. Right okay y'all so at least I got this braid started but um, yeah y'all so anyway that's why I delete them and so um, recently I have been getting a lot like an increased amount of people with a lot of audacity <laughs> and here's the thing when I used to get negative comments you know when my channel was primarily just me without you know including anything else really about my life and everything or even when it's like okay y'all saying negative stuff about me I whatever um, didn't like it then but it is what it is it hurt my feelings and everything like that but now people are starting to talk about my loved ones and in particular Jeff <laughs> or you're talking about you know kind of my parenting or decisions I need to be making with my daughter and things like that and I'm aware number one that 99% of the people that are watching this I ain't talking about y'all <laughs> I'm not you guys are super supportive and 
I've, I've mentioned this on my channel before that I feel as though God um, has allowed me to go through a lot of things in my life um, for this, wow, I'm not washed out, there we go, um, for this season of my life to help someone else. Some of my experiences, some of the things that, you know, I have gone through, I believe that God allowed me to go through those things because he saw where I was going to be today and that I would be sharing it with thousands of women. I feel like those issues and those things that I've gone through were there to help me in the moment, but also to help you guys later on. Or, you know, that is why I'm very open with my sharing because I feel like God has confirmed to me that that is what my platform um, is about with helping his people. I'm aware of that and I try to stay open to that. But the truth of the matter is as well is that I am a human being. And sometimes a small percentage of you guys forget that and think that just because I share certain parts of my life with you guys that you have an equal say. <laughs> or that you have the right to speculate or to judge or to you know any anything like that and I understand that I'm a Christian I don't call myself a Christian influencer because that's not like I don't my content is not about God but I integrate it because God is part of my life right so I talk about it God's a huge part of my life so why would I not mention it right but I feel like when you even bring that into your content that people start to feel like they can judge you I'm going to keep this chapter's response short because I feel like the title speaks for itself. Parasocial relationships are not actual relationships. Someone sharing parts of their life with strangers on the internet does not equal said stranger actually knowing them. Nor does it equate to that stranger having the right to opinions on decisions that a perfect stranger makes for their life whether they allow you a peek into it or not. That's saying that everyone is entitled to their opinions has given people way too much power. Sure, everyone is entitled to feel however they feel towards just about anything, yeah. But being entitled to feel however you feel about something does not equal you being able to say whatever you feel to anyone. Yeah, of course, you know, we can't stop people from saying whatever they want. But what I can do is set whatever boundary I see fit to protect my peace and my mental health. Now, if that's deleting comments, blocking people, or even handing you your ass back to you, if should you happen to get out of line, that's what I'm entitled to. You can say whatever you want. But understand, there might be consequences with doing that. I'm sure we've all seen racist folk using their quote unquote freedom of speech to say whatever they feel. And then the same racist <laughs> that was exercising that old freedom of speech, yeah, they had to face consequences of said speech. Cause now they're sitting around unemployed behind that, I can say whatever I want attitude. People have got to stop thinking that you have any right to anyone, no matter the job that they have. I can put whatever I choose to put out in front of the world and then still expect to have peace. And I can also set boundaries around anyone who was mishandling me in order to keep that peace. Everybody has rights. So why don't people choose to do right with their rights more than they choose to do wrong? Chapter two, if you have nothing nice to say, just say nothing at all. Your life or make sure that you are doing what you say you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Or things like that um, with, cause I'm gonna just go ahead and say some of the comments that I've gotten, you know, people thinking that, you know, thinking and accusing me of Jeff living here, you know what I'm saying, before we're married, or um, assuming that Jeff and I are having sex, or, you know, is it just a whole bunch of stuff like that people are saying when it comes to that? But besides that, um, recently I've gotten some crazy comments um, attacking my fiance. 
and pretty much saying that he is someone that he's not or that um, because things are moving so fast that he must have you know have some type of ill intent or you know stupid crazy crazy things like this is you're not going to accuse someone you have no idea about from seeing the most minimal pieces of that person on my channel y'all see 45 minutes to an hour of my life of my entire week that is heavily edited and curated for you guys like heavily and so what kills me is that people then say things like I'm looking out for you or I'm your real follower because I'm looking out for you or sometimes your followers see things you don't like you don't see anything you see what I let you see <laughs> and so it's it's frustrating to me because it's like not only is that but you are creating concepts that are untrue this person went on to say um you know if you, you do all this stupid stuff woo, 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 heck I'd marry you too it's giving projecting sis you're projecting either things that you have gone through or you're projecting the type of person that you deal with or the type of person that you are onto me and my situation but my thing is i'm human and what you're not going to do is try to tear down what i am building with my future husband and that's my union so i have to protect that before it gets started because i know that god is doing some things with us um as a couple um in our union as we are working towards that like i'm very aware of that and just because a situation is not anything that you're used to or you know what i'm saying it's like why would you think that no one can be genuine like that why would you always have to look be pessimistic and think about things like that because if any of you guys had i mean did you knock on my door okay. so if any of you guys had a three minute conversation with jeff or even saw him in person you would realize he is not that type of person now i'm not about to sit here and explain things about my man or to explain things about our relationship or how we met or things he's been through or anything like that to prove the validity of our situation that's what i'm not gonna do because to be frank it's no one's business however a lot of people try to make it seem as though it is their business because I share my life online. Like, I feel like those people that are trolls and have negative comments, they say, well, I should have the right to leave my comment because you the one who put it out there, so I should be able to say whatever I wanna say. Or you live your life online, how you gonna say we nosy? Or how you gonna say that we um, can't ask this question? Or whatever the case may be. Most of the questions or the things that are thrown at me negatively are things that I do not share intentionally. <laughs> because just because I put things online does not mean I have to put everything online. I still am entitled to my own privacy. I am still entitled to things in my life. There's so many things in my life going on in my life that you guys do not know about. Um, and not just the negative people, but anybody in general, you're unaware of it because it's my private life and my private business. I'm still entitled to that even though I'm a YouTuber. But even comments that I've gotten of people saying, you should have let Amira live in, live in the house for a little while with you by yourself, the house you purchased for her before you get a man in there or start talking to somebody. And like, what are you talking about? I've been single for two years and Amira ain't had no man in her space. Like, what is the timing or me buying this house or anything have to do with that? I don't, I don't have to explain that to anybody because that's just not, it's just not your business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I don't I, that's what pisses me off when people saying that kind of stuff because it's like you're trying to take a hit at my parenting like I don't know what to do what's best for my child y'all don't see in there's relationship with him and it's extremely judgmental to pass judgment on someone who you see here's the thing everybody spends so much time dissecting the lives of other people that they have no time left to dissect and then work on their own lives. Whether or not someone is sleeping with this person or that person before marriage, after marriage, during marriage, why is that any of your business? Again, this idea that someone is entitled and, and not just someone, but a complete stranger is entitled to tell another adult how to live their life, that's preposterous. 
don't care what someone chooses to share about their life on the internet. That does not give you the right to say how one should or shouldn't do anything. It's plenty of things that people do and say that don't align with my beliefs. And you know what I do when I see someone doing something that don't sit right with me? I just unfollow them and quietly move on with my life. I am constantly working on me. Doing things like working on being a better woman. Heck, just being a better human. I want to leave this world better than how I found it. And when we are remaining introspective and continuously working on ourselves, we ain't got no time left to be seeing what somebody else is doing. Y'all need to spend less time being all up in somebody else's business and get into your own. Or at the very least, just go somewhere and sat down and hush. We need to revamp that old saying. If you have nothing nice to say, then just don't say nothing at all. Y'all remember when our elders used to tell us that? Yeah, let's see if we can get back to that, okay? Chapter three. Never take advice from someone who has never been where you are trying to go. Frustrating to me. It's extremely frustrating. And some of these comments that I've been getting lately um, have made me start to like rethink if I want to share my life and my relationship. And you know, now here's the thing, I'm very, still very private. Even though you guys know I'm getting married, y'all seen just face, y'all know how we met, you know, like high level facts, you know what I'm saying? I don't share my relationship and my business online. I don't. Y'all not gonna never know if we're having an argument. You're not gonna know if something's going on in the family that's bothering us. You're not gonna know if Amir's having issues in school. Like, y'all not gonna know that kind of stuff, right? Because that's, that's what I choose to keep private. You know what I'm saying? But it just made me even, even rethink, do I even wanna share my relationship any further besides just doing content about the wedding or, you know, talking about marriage or transitioning to a wife without talking about me and him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I have to protect that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I rethought that and what God, I've been praying about it. Jeff and I both prayed about it together. Um, but what I feel like God's telling me that I shouldn't change or shift what he has me doing um, just because of a certain few people who, you know, have something to say. And the thing is, I know it's a few people, but when I leave these things on for hours, so many people jump on and co-sign and, you know, make comments or like the comments. So, so it's obviously more than what I think are thinking this. And so it's just, it's just, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating to me and it makes me want to pull back. It really did. Like I had a whole little situation the other day of just talking to Jeff, talking to my mom, like I feel like pulling back. Like, because what, because I, I don't want to risk my peace. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to risk like any, like what you're doing you are imposing on people who are building a relationship and building a marriage, you know, going towards that. This is a crucial time. And it's like, I see, oh my God, just this week, I see after that q and video, I'm like, I see why people hide their man. Like, I see why people don't want to be open and honest about their relationship. Not open and honest, but just don't share that part because a lot of people on the internet, you guys are ruthless and you feel like you need to find some business. You said find some business. Like, why are you so, it's almost scary that people are invested in you in that way that it's like they will create scenarios saying that they're taken up for you. But what you're doing is projecting and you're creating things that are not true. Not true. You have no idea what you were talking about. People create these things and sometimes it really, really bothers me because I could care less, I'm sorry, about the person who's leaving it because you don't have nothing better to do than create lies. My issue is I don't want to sit on my channel for multitudes and, and thousands of people to hook onto it and then lies are being spread about me. That's my thing. If you're really concerned about me or you have something to say, send me a DM on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I may see it, I may not, I may respond, I may not. However, if you really cared, why are you saying it in this public space? Because you want attention and you want someone else to go to click onto it. So 
I really like, I know some of you guys, some of my true supporters, people that love me and support me um, and realize, you know, not thinking negatively about my situation. I'm gonna say I don't have to defend myself. I hate the fact that I feel like I have to defend myself. But I'm just at the point, like y'all know I'm always open and honest and vulnerable with you guys. I'm always gonna be that way. And even if I did pull back, I would get on here and be like, look y'all, I'm gonna pull back and it's for this reason. You know what I'm saying? On, you know, my relationship being open about all that kind of stuff. The reason why I'm open is because I've shared this journey with you guys. You guys have been around with me since I was with my ex, you know, some of my OGs. I've seen my journey from growing, growing in the Lord and growing in, you know, my dating and stop dating and letting God lead me and guide me and all of those things. So I'm not about to, I didn't want to shield that part. Ouch, I broke my nail and I just hit it super hard. <laughs> it hurts. Um, I don't want to shield that. Obviously, I wouldn't shield that part from you guys. But now it's like that I was in the open. So many people are saying such negative things. Just because my situation is moving a lot faster than anything you've ever seen does not mean it's fake. Does not mean that my man has ill intentions. Does not mean that I'm being stupid. Does not mean... It doesn't mean any of those things. And if you knew these people, if you knew my fiance, if you knew my realtor, if you knew all of that you would know that that is not the situation that is going on. But it's just sad that people are even saying these things without any foundation. I can almost 100% guarantee that those wild comments that she was receiving were coming from single women or women who have been in or are currently in a felling relationship or marriage. And I know this because Anyone who is in a healthy, loving marriage would not be surrounding your soon-to-be marriage with so much negative energy. When you have a strong marriage, you try to build other strong marriages. You understand the importance of having the people in your village pour into that marriage. If you truly have concerns about something, then ask God to cover that marriage or the people in it and then keep it moving. I learned long ago that taking any kind of advice from someone who has never had the healthy relationship that, that I was seeking was a big part in why I felt negative like all the time when it came to my dating and being in relationships. You know, they say misery loves company and this is for sure a fact. Does anyone happen to remember that time that Wendy Williams came for Miss Tabitha Brown's marriage? This heifer had the nerve to say that she gives their marriage one year before they are headed towards divorce. I'm going to put a little clip in here for you guys to see. Uh, but there's this woman, her name is Tabitha Brown. Oh, you know her? Clap if you know her. Okay, good, 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 good. I don't know her. Well, she's an influencer and she's saying that she's retiring her husband. He's been a police officer for 15 years and he wants to live out his dreams. Take a look. I have said to him, babe, it's time. It's time. It's time for him to dream again. It's time for him to uh, think like a child and think, Ooh, when I grow up, what do I want to be? And it's something else. It's time for a new journey, a new chance at life, right? And God has blessed us. He has blessed me that I can retire my husband. Nope. I was married to one of those. You know, I make the money and so on and so forth. Go live your dreams, buy a business, you know, stay with me, but... Go, go, go. You see how that turned out. I predict that this marriage is gonna be on real rocky ground in a moment. Live your dream. Then they invest in stuff and they lose the money. And then they invest in something else and the money gets swindled or stolen. And then they invest again. Then he comes home and throws his bag down. And then he's like, and she's like, what? What? And he's like, I can't do this, and this is your fault. You're over here making all your money and stuff. You had me quit my job, and I can't find my live like a child. 
I, no, but do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, no, uh -huh. no, you work. Uh, being a cop was a big part of his identity. Uh, he liked it, but um, she came to him and said that. I clap if you understand what I'm saying. Be first in your marriage, okay? Um, and that is how it remains successful. We keep him first. He is first in our marriage, not money, not business, not success, but God, he's first, okay? Um, so this is my prayer for you. Uh, I pray that love finds you, true love. I pray it finds you and it holds you tight. I pray that someone will love you enough to see you, to see you when you are not well, to see you when you need true support, to see you when you need compassion, to see you when you need kindness. I pray that somebody loves you enough to sacrifice their life for you. I pray that type of love binds you so that you can understand why I don't want my husband to put his life on the line anymore wearing a bulletproof vest if he don't have to and if that's not his desire. I love him enough that I want him to be safe and I want him to coach children the way he wants to. My husband has a nonprofit, right? And he wants to be able to build that even more so. And what I do know is a nine to five or a steady job takes away time for creativity, takes away time that you wanna pour into your real true purpose. And if God blesses someone to be able to pull out of that nine to five and pour everything into their purpose, their passion. Ooh, my goodness. Why would we dishonor God if he blesses us with the ability and the way to be able to do so? Ooh, honey, I'm excited about that. Ooh, I pray that somebody finds you, love finds you, that excites you the way I am excited about my husband being able to grow his business, being able to pour into children, continue to coach these kids, do other things he's dreamt about. Ooh, honey, I pray this type of excitement and love finds you and anybody else who seems to not understand this. I pray that type of love finds you sacrifice, compassion, like I really do. I really, really do. Okay, um, with that being said, uh, I thank all of y'all <laughs> for messaging me and, and telling me about it. And I want you, whoever is watching, who understands the type of love, let us all pray for people like Miss Wendy um, and others who have either been so hurt uh, or never found a genuine love that fills their heart with so much compassion and joy. Let us all pray that they find that and that it finds them. Yes, very good. Now, see what I'm talking about? And see, Miss Wendy said that because she has not had a healthy marriage. So to her, from her vantage point, a healthy marriage can't exist. I will never minimize her personal experiences when it relates to her marriage. But I would also not take advice on marriage from someone who has her mindset. She has not been where I am trying to go. So why would I look to her for that advice? You know what I'm saying? So my thought is some of these comments, they're most certainly going to come from some trolls. But some of them just come from single misinformed women. Women who have not yet experienced what you have. Thus making it not a reality for you because how can it be when it hasn't been a reality for them? As hard as it might be, I would take anything that they say with a grain of salt because honestly, it's very much giving misplaced frustration. If we're being honest here, it's normal for humans to feel envious over a person's situation that they wish they were in. It can present as hate. It can present as quote unquote concern. 
It can even present as someone trying to dig up the dirt on your significant other in an attempt to, quote unquote, protect you. But what it really is, is just plain old fashioned jealousy. Being envious is a normal human emotion. But not being able to keep yourself in control of it and then trying to break someone or destroy their happiness is not. That's mean spirited and it's very much giving ugly energy. Not ugly in a physical sense, but ugly in a spirited sense. But first, a quick message from our sponsors. Have you ever been minding your own business, living your best life, and out of nowhere, catch a whiff of something? Something nasty? Mm-hmm, yeah, that's you. But not to worry. All you have to do is give one quick swipe wherever you find funk, and poof, problem solved. Psych, y'all, I'm just playing. I ain't uh, got no sponsors. <clears throat> well, not yet. Now I'm clowning, but for real though, before we go into this next chapter, can y'all do me a favor and subscribe? Subscribe, please. Please subscribe. Go ahead. Subscribe. 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 Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please. Why aren't you subscribing? Huh? 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 Please subscribe. Oh, and I know I just asked you for a favor, but can you also give me one more little thing? I won't bother you again. Just a quick thumbs up, okay? Thanks. Now, let's get back into this audio blog. Chapter 4 Girl, your story is yours to tell. You better tell it. About this. My goodness, it's been bothering me. Y'all have no idea. And I feel like it's way easier said than done, like for people to be like, just throw it off your shoulder, Maya. Don't think about it. Don't this, don't that. Don't worry about them. And it's like, yes, I'm not worried about them. It just frustrates me that I'm open and honest and I put it out there and people create lies. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people who have a lot of followers or know very well known, this happens to them daily. But I guess I'm still learning how to deal with it. And it's just not easy. It's not easy. And it makes, it does sometimes make me want to pull back. But I've listened, look at the comments and the DMs and the things from people who my story helps or my story truly like resonates with them or gives people hope or you know things like that and that's what has me like okay Lord I have to be stronger I have to be stronger than this um so I can continue for those women because that is what matters the most um but it's like I wish it would stop I just really wish those who leave these negative comments would realize number one you don't know me the way you know think you know me you also don't know my fiance, you don't know my parenting, you don't know any of those things. You see what I show you, um, which is very specific, very heavily edited, and that it's not your place to try to correct me. It's not your place to try to judge me in my decisions. It's not your place to decide that things are too soon. I get so many comments of other women saying, hey, I married my man in this amount of time. This is four months, three months, one year. We've been married for 20, 30 years. Just because you ain't seen it, don't mean it's not possible. Anything is possible with God. And some of these people even try to throw God in there to say that, you know, is, is that really who God has for you? Are you sure about that? Like, I'm just really tired. I'm just tired of the negativity. I'm tired of it. For those of you guys who consider yourself to be concerned about me and my situation uh, with Jess and it moving quickly, um, 
here's what I would say, because I know you guys have gone with me on this journey. I know you guys have been with me for a while. Um, I'm assuming it's the people who have not ever experienced or seen relationships move that quickly. I'm a praying woman. Um, my family is a praying family. Um, I do have discernment when it comes to things like this god has always given me the discernment that i needed when it comes to men that i spent my time with uh, men that i brought around my daughter which has only been three to this point her father my ex and now jeff um god has always given me the discernment that i need for situations in my life um and this time in my life is no different um and i've been that way since i was a child or if you could say high school um, every guy that I come in contact with that I start to talk to or don't talk to I've gotten rid of because I felt like God was telling me this ain't it or this person is this or you know what I'm saying like I follow that and I trust that and Jeff has met my family he's met my sister which you all know is a prayer warrior <laughs> and my sister even has prayed and said God show me something if there is something wrong in this situation if someone has an intention show me give me the clarity and the guidance and God has and she has said God has said nothing and she's been listening okay let me tell you I have people praying for me and I'm okay <laughs> I'm telling you, I am okay and y'all got to trust that. I am in the best situation that I have been in my life and this is all because of God. Everything about our situation is aligned by God and when I tell y'all that, I need y'all to trust me. I love y'all and I know that some people have genuine concern and sometimes concern comes from ignorance. Not in the negative sense of ignorance, but ignorance in the definition of the word of not knowing. You know what I'm saying? So. I need you guys to realize that things are great, okay? I have people praying. Um, our situation is orchestrated by God. It truly is. And I'm not going to, you know, come come back on that. That's just what it is, the truth. God is doing this thing. And I'm 100% sure of that. Um, we have spiritual guidance. We have spiritual leaders. We are about to start marriage counseling with who's going to marry us. This is real. And I just need those of you who are concerned to just lighten up a little bit. Because what you got to realize is... The audacity for someone to question your discernment is wild to me. But again... I say boundaries really can play a huge part in maintaining your peace and protecting your union. Now, my other thought is to say with my whole entire chest that girl, you bet not stop sharing your story. I am a firm believer in sharing our stories. Your story could be the answer that someone has prayed for. God uses us to be blessings to others. And why would you tell God you can't complete the mission he put you on because some trolls on the internet is giving you a hard time? Girl, people gone people. And unfortunately, there is nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is set boundaries. For me, a boundary is making sure that people around me understand how I expect to be handled. I demand that anyone around me handle me with care, kindness, and love. And if they are not able to do so, then they are not allowed to handle me at all. That could mean loving certain family or friends from a distance. Or in the case of being a content creator, that can mean just blocking people. And lastly, no one can decide for anyone what is the proper time frame for any decision that has been made by another adult. I met my husband on October the 18th. We got married on December the 12th of that same year. That's 56 days after meeting. Girl, that was 10 years ago, okay? And I'm still very much happily married to this man. When my husband and I made the decision to get married so quickly, we didn't even tell anybody because we didn't want to hear nobody's opinions. 
And I have learned the less cooks in the kitchen, the better. I allow very few people into my marriage. And by into, I mean people that I turn to for counsel if me and my husband, or not even if, it's when, because you will hit bumpy roads. We have our marriage mentors and that's it. Early on in our marriage, we would hit a rough patch and I might've called a friend or a family member to vent, but I didn't realize that that was a very bad practice. When you let too many people in, that's when you start getting mess and confusion. And mess and confusion ain't never going to be good for a marriage, especially a new marriage. But getting back to my point, continue to share your life and continue to bless women who need to hear your story. But just set boundaries to protect your family, though. You set those boundaries to protect your family, to protect your marriage, and to protect your peace. Girl, someone needs to hear your story and the whole story. I share my own story and in doing so, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but that's not my problem. My story is not for them. My story is for whoever God puts on my path and needs to hear from me. My story is for whoever needs to know that they can get through whatever that they are struggling with. My story is for that person. And your story can do the same for somebody too. Chapter five. Stop explaining yourself and start setting boundaries. On people. And just because it's something you're unused to or something that makes you cringe or something that you feel is not real or that someone has, has ill intentions for me does not mean that that's the truth. You do not see everything. You do not see the conversations being had outside of the camera. You do not see the bonds that are being created. You do not see the prayers going forth. You do not see the prayers that are over us. You do not see the different details of our lives that have been aligned in this union. You don't see any of that. And I have the right to keep that to myself. And I have to feel pressured to share every single detail of my life so that people aren't talking about me and my fiance and my child. Um, but I need, I need y'all. I need, <laughs> this is me asking, I need that too. I need that to stop. <laughs> if you do it, like I said, it will get deleted. If it's seen by me, my mama, whoever is in my comments, it will get deleted. So don't waste your time. <laughs> don't waste don't waste your time. And I know some people will be offended because I know people feel like I should be able to say whatever I want to, or I should be able to do this or do that. Okay, then shoot me a DM. If you truly care about me, shoot me a DM. If you guys knew how much of a caring person, beautiful soul, um, amazing person Jeff was, what he has gone through in his life, that he would never be and ever take those types of actions. Like he's in, in genuinely not, not that person, not just because of what I've seen from him, but for what God has been revealing to me because I'm a praying woman. You know what I'm saying? So I pray. I say, God, show at the beginning of this or still. God, show me what I don't see. God, show me. And God has been confirming to me that this man is is it. Honestly, I don't really know what else to say. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I shouldn't have to say anything else. But I just wanted to be honest with you guys with the struggles that I'm having when it comes to my content surrounding my love and my marriage and in my future marriage and my, um, fiance and the wedding and all of that that's how i'm feeling i'm feeling like pulling back and not including it but i'm not gonna do that i'm praying um if you're a praying woman pray for me please um because it's hard it's hard to have strangers and i, I don't want to call y'all strangers because so many of you guys love and support me and love me and i love y'all but if we're just looking at the facts, you guys know me. Unfortunately, I don't know you guys. And it hurts for people that I feel like don't really truly know what's going on to say such mean things. Um, it's just it's just extremely hurtful. So I would just I am just hoping and praying that um, 
that y'all would lighten up a little bit on the sister. You know what I'm saying? Give me a bit of a doubt. Um, I also had some comments of people saying, you know, how do you find a man that's marriage minded so quickly? Or I don't believe it because how you the first man you found down there that actually wants to get married? And I'm just like, y'all must not believe in the Lord. <laughs> Some ain't right. Somebody, somebody ain't 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 really a believer and have that faith. Because when I tell you, when you pray with on something and you cover it in prayer, you have other people praying with you on that goal or on that desire. Honey, God can do anything. Um, I feel like that in my situation. I didn't have to come down here and date the whole city in order to find a man because I feel like God had him waiting for me. Um, my husband was actually my husband. I can't used to call him that. Hey, my husband, yeah, my fiance. Um, he was actually about to leave the state, <laughs> um, a, literally months before we met, and God put a hold on that. Um, he was about to leave the state and just start over, just because of you know how things were going for him, um, and you know relationship, you know like romantic wise and all that, and God inserted me. Um, into his space, into his into his path. So when I tell you guys, God can God can do, God can do that. God can do that. I know from my own situation, regardless of people wanting to believe that, um, you know, that my fiance is not right or that he is has ill intents, or even that my realtor had ill intents when introducing us. Like Shanae did not set us up. What Shanae did is, if anything, Shanae told me who he was before he came there. She did not tell him. He had, she had been trying to get him to come to this event for about two months. I met Shanae about three weeks before this event. So she had been on him trying to get him to come to this event. He said he was not coming. By the time I... I'm the kind of person that really hates being misunderstood. And because I thoroughly dislike <laughs> being misunderstood so much, I tend to over explain. I used to over explain so much that people would think I was lying or making excuses when what I was actually trying to do was to make sure that I was being heard clearly. And I discovered that no matter how much I explained myself or how many receipts I would provide, if someone believes that I'm being dishonest or not presenting the full situation, then they're going to believe that no matter what I do or say. People be so cynical to the point where being told a lie about you is more likely to be believed than being told the truth by you. That's just the side of human nature. And there's nothing we can really do to change that. But the one thing we can do is set boundaries. Peace can be found in any space where boundaries exist. Okay? Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And make sure you have firm boundaries in every aspect of your life. Having boundaries in place is literally life-changing chapter six it is too good to be true he said he ain't coming that ain't happening so she didn't even ask him during that time he come. she did not tell him nothing about me he knew nothing about me when we crossed paths nothing zero zilch nada Shanae, in her mind, thought that we could go good together. That's why she showed me him, but she said he ain't coming because he was the only single guy that was her client, but he was not going to come. Period. Come in. Y'all, Shanae felt like if she put us in the same room, that things could happen, but he wasn't coming. When I tell y'all God orchestrated this thing, he did. And that's just the truth of the matter. To them, it seems too good to be true. And that's where that's that's what it's giving. All of these comments that I'm saying. It's giving this is not possible to happen. How is how could this possibly happen to you if it doesn't happen to me or to anyone else? Like there's something ain't right in the Kool-Aid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that is what it's given. And it's like, no, God can do anything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish. I didn't need to insert this, y'all, because I already started done filming, but I also had people 
assuming that I financially <laughs> have, you know, been paying for everything or that Jeff is living off of me or that he just wants my money. And <laughs> here's the thing. I do not have to share my personal financial situation on my channel. Like, do you guys hear how that sounds? Like, that is not something that I have to share with. That's my personal business. You know what I'm saying? Whether Jeff is paying for everything, or if I'm paying half of things, or if I'm paying for something, I don't have to tell you guys that. I do not have to be open and honest about that. And that's what I mean. Just because I share my life on the internet does not mean I have to give that information and that you have to have a complete understanding of what's going on for you to be okay. I share my life online, certain aspects of it, very specific, tailored, curated aspects of my life online. But I share it. I don't do it for a group discussion on what I should do, if this person's right, if I'm doing the right thing. That's not my purpose of sharing things, which is why I feel like I have the authority to delete these negative comments because that is not the thing on my channel. This is not an open community discussion about Maya's personal life. It's not. It's not. So, um, yeah, I just, I said, throw that in there. And I feel like the times that I have addressed these kind of things, people will be like, you know, well, you can't control what people have to say, or you can't control my opinion, or the fact that I want to speak on this. And it's like, okay, cool, you're right. I can't control what comes out your mouth. But if that's the case, and I can't control you spewing negativity on me and my life and my family and things and saying things that are untrue, and you should have the right to do that, cool, you have the right to do that. And then I have a right to pull that information from my channel. Because I have to protect my peace, I have to protect my family, I have to protect the union that I'm building with my future husband. And that's not okay to do that to people. All right, y'all, so. It's too good to be true by some of the people on the outside looking in, only because it hasn't yet happened for them. Anything that you have not experienced, especially if it's something that you really want, it's going to seem too good to be true. Again, human nature at play. And there's really not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Remember I was telling you? But there is that one thing you can do to maintain your peace, which is set them boundaries. You'd be surprised at what boundaries can do for your mental health. Nobody should have the right to come into your house and tell you what they have the right to do in your space. Here are my boundaries. And this is how things are going to be handled around here. And you can either respect my boundaries or you don't. And then you just are not here. It's probably easy for me to say because <laughs> I have like seven subscribers. <clears throat> Ooh. As of now, just as of now. But I promise, even as my channel grows, that will still be my position. I fought too hard for this piece. And I refuse to allow anyone or anything disrupt that. Be mindful of how you allow others to handle you. And forgive yourself for how you've handled you. Please consider becoming a part of my village. I think you'll like it here. Until next time. Since you're already here, you might as well watch another video. I'll just put it right here for you. It's right here. Just one little click. Go ahead. So we can be together longer, okay? All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.